has been king since about 2015. The way we watch TV has changed drastically because of the distribution method. Most seasons today are 10 episodes and are either dropped all at once or weekly over the period of a month or two. TV shows are now mostly designed as 8 to 10 hour movies split into parts that have a story arc that carries through the entire season. This is called serialization. Before streaming, people had to watch TV when it was broadcast or miss it, up until the introduction of DVR technology in the early 2000s. Yes, you could record TV on VHS tapes in the 80s and 90s, but most people struggled to set the clock on a VCR, much less program it to record something while they were away. TV shows nonetheless were becoming increasingly serialized in the early 2000s, but it wasn't really until the age of streaming that we moved away from the 22 episode season and into what we have now. In the early 2000s, CGI, or digital special effects, had become much cheaper to produce and with much better results than just a few years before. This made the idea of showing a ship in space, or an explosion, or an alien city much more accessible to small screen budgets and led to more ambitious ideas being realized. Also, if you look at the list of movies coming to theaters during this period from 2002 to 2008, there wasn't much in the way of high fantasy or deep science fiction being released. Besides the Matrix sequels and the Star Wars prequels, both of which were questionable to many people, there was very little in the way of respectable science fiction on the silver screen. This created a TV audience hungry for it and maybe willing to try new things. Historically, science fiction on television was Star Trek, maybe Doctor Who, and the rest was schlock for the most part unless you liked the quirky offbeat stuff like Lex or Farscape, which I did by the way. Let's talk about several shows that redefined our perceptions of science fiction TV and what it could be. Heroes 2006. In a world that was not yet exhausted with superheroes, with the MCU just being a spark in some producer's eye, two years before the success of the first Iron Man movie in 2008, Heroes gave us a thrilling alternate reality where humans were developing superpowers without necessarily being heroes. Popularizing the flawed anti-hero, Heroes tells the story of several unlikely heroes, villains, and victims who were thrown together by fate and hunted by nefarious powers. In 2006, most people's idea of a superhero was Tobey Maguire's squeaky clean Spider-Man or maybe the mixed motivations of Hugh Jackman's early Wolverine performances. In both cases, fairly by-the-book superheroes with tidy happy endings at the end of each movie. Heroes showed that regular people who were exposed to extraordinary power could react in unpredictable ways. Some would use their power for good, while others would bumble their way through making mistakes and hurting people along the way. Some would use the power for their own gain or sell the power to the highest bidder. This made for very fresh and novel TV, as this type of story had not really been told on any screen, big or small, at least not as successfully as Heroes did it. Other more complex heroes would be introduced to us years later thanks to 2009's Watchmen, but Heroes did a lot to pave the way for other super-powered shows to come. Fringe 2008. Looking back now, Fringe really comes off as X-Files with sci-fi, but back then shows that explored really deep ideas of psychology and the human mind, multiple realities, advanced technology, and sinister conspiracies were basically non-existent. In earlier years, we had series like The Outer Limits and The Twilight Zone that occasionally touched on similar themes, but those were anthology series where each episode was completely standalone with unique writers and actors and had no continuing stories. Going back to X-Files, which clearly had an influence on the creation of Fringe, it definitely had some serialization going back as early as the first season with continuing and recurring storylines woven throughout the series. But Fringe took it a step further, building on a couple major plot themes throughout the whole series while still being episodic enough that you could miss a few episodes and still get some value from it. Can you imagine today randomly watching, say, Season 3, Episode 7 of Stranger Things for the first time and not being totally lost? Speaking of lost... 
Lost, 2004. Lost was one of the biggest cultural phenomena of the era. In today's age, we have lost the element of water cooler talk. There really is no pop culture anymore. Things come and go so fast, they are popular for like two weeks and then it's on to the next thing. Pop culture means popular culture, which translates to the thing everyone is talking about. We no longer have a Thursday morning after a Wednesday evening episode of a show that got 30 million viewers. A show like Lost captured the attention of everyone at the time, from teens to grandparents, and experiences like this united us as a culture. People would speculate for an entire week as to what would happen to the survivors of the plane crash, and this phenomena went on for seven years at 22 episodes a year. Every week from September to May, there was always someone to talk about your favorite thing. Lost took the serialized format to a whole new level where it was imperative to see every episode, and this created a level of engagement rarely seen around schoolyards and water coolers of the world. Following this group of diverse survivors on a plane that crashed under very mysterious circumstances was the mystery on everyone's mind. Battlestar Galactica 2004 BSG was a reboot of a 1970s show that didn't find success in its day. Some would say it was ahead of its time with its dark and mature themes in a time when most sci-fi was lighthearted and frankly silly. The same can be said of the reboot. It took itself very seriously and took a close look at the flawed characters and their varied motivations at a time when most sci-fi was fairly by the books. Before we had dark, dark and mature shows like The Expanse, Altered Carbon, and Another Life, BSG G paved the way for dark and mature science fiction and proved that there was an audience for deeper, more complex storylines in an era of Monster of the Week type shows like The X-Files and Smallville. BSG also proved that you could have a diverse cast and find success far before the social justice movement had ever really gotten started. BSG gender swapped and race swapped several major characters and made us love those characters with virtually zero backlash. Every episode felt like a movie with cinematic camera work, great special effects, and compelling performances. The story of a colony of human beings searching for a home after having their planet destroyed is relatable to anyone. Doctor Who 2005 Doctor Who relaunched in 2005 after being off the air for over 15 years. Christopher Eccleston took on the role of the enigmatic Doctor and brought a whole new era of Who into the world. He was previously known for many smaller roles, but notably as the villain in 2000's Gone in 60 Seconds. Who had been a cultural icon in Britain where it was made for decades at this point, but it was relatively obscure in North America. When they relaunched the show with higher budgets and a new known actor in 2005, it very quickly became mainstream. Eccleston only stayed for one season, but his replacement, David Tennant, took the world by storm and his interpretation of the Doctor quickly became one of the most popular characters in sci-fi. The writing in the show is second to none and had to date some of the most creative and thought-provoking episodes of any show ever made. Tennant was followed by Matt Smith, an actor who brought a more playful and childlike energy to the show, which viewers all also loved. This particular incarnation of the show is still running, and there have been several different incarnations of the Doctor since, including a grumpy old man, Peter Capaldi, and a fun, quirky woman, Jodie Whittaker. This show has had its ups and downs over its 50-year history, but most point to the Eccleston, Tennant, and Smith years from 2005 to 2012 as being the best the series ever was or ever will be. Smallville, 2001. It might have seemed like I did Smallville dirty when discussing Battlestar Galactica, it's important to note that it did something few superhero shows had done at the time. Focused on the hero before he became the hero, and treated Clark like a regular kid with regular motivations, and gave him 10 seasons to grow and mature into the iconic hero Superman. Subverting expectations was the norm on Smallville, making you pity the villains and think twice about the heroes. One of the most complex characters on the show, Michael Rosenbaum's 
Clark's Lex Luthor, who we know becomes Superman's greatest villain, was a friend to Clark and a character you had to both pity and cheer for. Watching him slowly transition into a villain over the course of a decade of TV was some of the most spectacular character work seen on the small screen at a time where most TV was pretty shallow and week to week in terms of writing. TV shows were still pretty heavily episodic in nature in the 90s and it was fairly uncommon to have a serialized format where each episode built on the last. TV was usually built like Star Trek with standalone episodes that could be viewed almost in any order because of the nature of broadcast TV at the time. If you missed an episode, there was no way to go back to it until it appeared in reruns. TiVo, a device that allowed you to record and archive TV episodes, was introduced in 1999 and by 2009 over 30% of households had DVR or digital video recorders in their homes. This revolutionized the way people watch TV, allowing for longer story arcs and recurring themes in TV without people having to worry about missing an episode. Chuck, 2007. Falling towards the end of our golden age is NBC's Chuck, a show I have made several videos about in the past. Chuck was forever on the verge of being cancelled despite being a wonderful show that all ages could love. Set in a fictional big box electronics store, at least for half the show, Chuck Bartowski and his band of nerds and outcasts find themselves in crazy situations constantly. Chuck had inadvertently opened an email that uploaded the entirety of the CIA database into his brain. Now equipped with the intersect, Chuck must live a double life as a nerd by day and a bumbling spy by night. Despite never quite making it into pop culture, the show had a rabid fan base that helped keep it on the air several seasons beyond threatened cancellations. The show was mostly episodic in nature despite having a couple of multi-episode arcs. Zachary Levi, the actor who played Chuck, was instrumental in promoting nerd culture and went on to become a mini celebrity amongst the nerds and convention goers. Similar to the Big Bang Theory, Chuck did a lot to prove that being a nerd could be cool, that it could be okay to be passionate about comics and games and share that passion with others, something that would have resulted in endless bullying just years before. The 2010s were a boom in nerd culture thanks to shows like these on the list paving the way for more to come. Firefly 2002 Maybe the most regretted failure of genre TV was Joss Whedon's Firefly. Nerds have made a religion out of being fans of this show despite it being cancelled after just one season and a short season at that. Only 13 episodes were released, but Whedon did more world building in these 13 episodes than most shows do in 5 or 6 seasons. The spaghetti western inspired space opera introduced us to a future that was both dystopian and frightening while also having the most endearing moments of tenderness and joy. The small crew of Serenity, the Firefly class freight ship was a family and they looked out for each other despite having their differences. The show went on to have a feature film released in 2005 thanks to fan support, but it was a commercial flop too. And yet, the show lives on in the hearts of fans and is much bigger as a cultural phenomenon than it has any right to be. I can think of several shows I love that got cancelled after one season. Ever heard of The Event? No? How about No Ordinary Family? Terra Nova? All great shows that got one season nobody remembers, but Firefly is looked upon as some of the greatest science fiction ever made, a sentiment I do not disagree with in the least. Whedon had a way of making everything he touches feel like it was made for you and no one else. His stuff seems to transcend the screen and speak directly to your soul. Remember, he was still running Buffy the Vampire Slayer at this time, and the spin-off Angel was on the air until 2004. He was the king of genre TV for quite a while there. It's worth noting that in late 2007 there was a writer's strike in Hollywood and this severely impacted the trajectory of several shows. Despite the strike barely lasting four months, it torpedoed a ton of TV shows and it took the industry several years to recover. During this time we saw a resurgence of reality TV with shows like American Idol becoming the most popular things on TV because they did not require complex scripts. Many shows in the 2007 to 
2008 season had shortened seasons like the aforementioned Heroes or were cancelled entirely for the season like Grey's Anatomy, Ugly Betty, and Breaking Bad. Heroes never recovered from the strike. The ratings were so bad in its shortened second season that many viewers never came back for the third. It's unclear if they had new writers or other changes behind the scenes because it's one of the biggest tragedies in nerd TV and the first season of Heroes might be the single best season of any TV show ever made, at least in the science fiction genre, and it fell off a cliff so rapidly after the strike. They tried to bring the show back a few years ago with Heroes Rain an experiment that failed worse than the original flop, but still leaves a legacy of what could have been. It's worth noting that several older shows that started before this golden age also did very well during this period. Stargate SG-1 was on the air until 2007, and its spin-off Stargate Atlantis ran from 2004 to 2009 and was an exceptionally high-quality show. We also mentioned Buffy the Vampire Slayer earlier, and that was a cultural phenomenon amongst Gen X that has continued officially in comic book form to this day. Star Trek Enterprise is a show that was not looked on fondly during its initial run from 2001 to 2005, which is why it only made it four seasons compared to the seven seasons each of The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Looking back on Enterprise now, though, you can see that it fit into this golden age nicely. It had a different tone than the 90s Star Trek, but it holds up exceptionally well today just like most of the older stuff. One more show I have to mention, even though it's not sci-fi but urban fantasy, is Supernatural. Supernatural was one of the touchstone series of the nerd explosion of the 2000s, and to this day one of the most successful shows in genre TV, having 327 episodes over an incredible 15 seasons. A walk through an artist's alley at a comic book convention would easily show you how popular this show was, and remained so for 15 years years from 2005 until 2020. There were so many other excellent shows from this era that hold up so well. We forget with the current climate of politics that it didn't always used to be so dour. You can go back to any of these shows and have a good time. I should probably do another episode at some point talking about some of the more hidden gems from this era. Not specifically sci-fi as there was so much that got forgotten in the switch to streaming. I am currently watching The New Adventures of Old Chris Christine, a sitcom from 2006 starring Julia Louise Dreyfus and Clark Gregg. It's not the best show in the world, but it is a competent sitcom that most people have never seen. Well, that's it for the list today. I hope some of these recommendations bring you joy or bring up happy memories of a simpler time. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay classy.